We know God indirectly through creaturely signs and works. Even in the act of revealing himself, God veils himself so that his mystery, though not measured by human logic, permits itself to be grasped. Tampoi Sri Muniswarar Temple in Joho is a living testimony of this divine revelation. The temple is situated at the sixth kilometer from Joho on the highway to Kuala Lumpur and the origin of the story of this temple would reveal how God uses humans as his tools to fulfill the divine will. It all started in 1947 after the Japanese left Malaya and the establishment of the temple was basically an individual effort. A certain Subrayan was working in a Chinese workshop where he also doubled up as a part-time security guard. Carrying his gun, he would supervise the four-acre workshop at night. During one such night, he was so tired and dozed off in the middle of his duty. He had an offbeat dream wherein an old man with a grey beard appeared. The old man did not utter a word, but he drew a circle on a piece of paper with a pencil. When woken up, Subrayan was perplexed as he could not fathom the meaning of the dream. But he was doubly happy when he happened to see a place that he had already seen in his dream. Moreover, when he was on the patrol, he would see a tall figure walking near a thicket. He fired around in the air to scare the figure away, but the figure would vanish only to reappear again and again. Subrayan did not take much time in realizing that it was a divine act. There stood a tree in the dream place and there was a termite mound on the side of the tree where snakes used to crawl hither thither. Subrayan thought it was an ideal place for erecting a temple and did so with wooden planks. On the same night, Sri Muniswara appeared in his dream and the very next day he christened the temple to Sri Muniswara. The temple was slowly growing as a place of worship. Pujas were offered and rituals were held. Eggs and milk were offered to the snakes in the termite mound. Meanwhile, the students of the nearby school, while playing, were frightened by a sudden appearance of the snakes and the education department ordered to relocate the temple on a different site. At the same time, the education department did allocate an alternative site for the construction of the temple. What a wonder! Even the government allocated site contained a tree and a similar termite mound. Subrayan was delighted and he started erecting a temple in the new site provided by the government. He funded the project from his own personal savings. When the number of people visiting the temple increased, Subrayan dedicated himself full-time for the religious cause. He consecrated Vinayaga and Murugan along with the Muniswara. The temple was officially registered in 1970 and a managing committee was elected. Subrayan was elected the chairman of the managing committee. The small temple was now expanded to occupy a space of 60 feet in length. The temple was converted into a brand new structure at a cost of 150,000 ringgit in 1978 with the help from the government and other Muniswara devotees. Built to Agama rules, this temple was acknowledged as the largest of Muniswara temples in Malaysia. Occupying an area of 22,000 square feet with a tower rising above 71 feet, the temple's first Kumba Bishagam was carried out on the 22nd of January in 1978. Soon after, the development of the temple went through a faster phase. The temple was expanded to occupy an area of half an acre.
Mandapam or prayer hall complex and workers' quarters were built. The entrance of the tower was tastefully designed in multicolour. The temple has two main entrances and in front of the prime entrance on Mango Street, you can witness the impressive sight of two giants, each of them carrying a horse. On both sides of these giant guards, two man-made ponds were created and in each of these ponds, three nubile young women are seen carrying a pot each in their hands. A look at the temple from the Sinai Highway would bring into view the stucco idols of our spiritual gurus, the Patinatar, who died in the form of Sivalingam. Agastya, the pioneer of Siddha medicine, ancient Tamil poet Avayar, saint poet Tiruvalluvar, the principal Rishi Sri Visva Mitharar, and the author of Tiru Arudpa or Holy Hymns, Ramalinga Adigala.